I think that uh, the most important thing to realize is that the internet uh, has a much more profound effect in developing countries than in developed ones. And since I grew up in Venezuela, and I also had the opportunity to attend Stanford University in the US, I was able to grasp both viewpoints and to realize how much most more important was for developing countries internet access. So as soon as I was involved in the computer networking activities, I become very interested in, in extending that uh, opportunity to, to Venezuela in particular, and to begin with, and to the Latin American countries uh, later. Being in, in a city in Latin America, you know, everything happens in the capital. So if you are like we were 600 kilometers from the capital, in, in a small city which had a good university, but it was very far from, you know, the political and, and the economic uh, hub of the country. So it, it was very difficult for us to get, you know, any kind of support from, you know, um, uh, even the government or, or the, the companies that would uh, deal with the with the technology that normally support this kind of activity. For us, it was very uphill. But fortunately, um, on, during my sabbatical, I, had, I was invited by Glenn Reichert, which, who was then at uh, Suranet in College Park, Maryland. And uh, I spent part of my sabbatical there before going to ICTP. And he introduced me to Sol Han from the Organization of American States. And uh, so uh, through this introduction, I was able to get support from Organization of American States to fund, partially fund, the first uh, Latin American networking school in, in Merida, Venezuela. Glenn Reichardt was one of the most important because he was the one who really believed in me when I was not known to anybody and he invited me to, to spend part of my sabbatical in, in his institution at the University of Maryland and from there then I, I of course also had the opportunity to, to interact with Ben Siegel from CERN who was also one, uh, he was the, way, the one who first launched the idea that since we were doing internet uh, uh, training in uh, Latin America, why would not we join the similar effort that were on the way by the internet society back then? The internet has gone a long way and uh, at the beginning, the most uh, important obstacle was connectivity, which is still so in some countries. And we are actually working very hard to, to make that obstacle disappear. But now there is a, a, a glooming obstacle, which is uh, really bad, because it's been that uh, there are so many commercial interests that have been, uh, let's use our word, technical word, orthogonal to the original interest of the internet uh, connectivity, which is to join people together and to be an equalizing force from people of different culture and different viewpoints and, and, and different uh, backgrounds. And unfortunately, some of the latest development have been really uh, against that trend. And uh, in the pursuit of, of uh, economic benefits, they have stamped upon uh, many of the original uh, ideals that uh, uh, people uh, were really expecting out of the internet. The first thing is that I think that uh, you, are em you are empowered much more than we were because you have the tools that we didn't have. And this is the history of humankind. It's always been like that. You know, there is a famous phrase of uh, Isaac Newton saying that uh, his efforts were made, you know, on, on the shoulder of Titan that preceded him. And the same thing goes like now. 
the history of humankind, despite you know the fallbacks and and the, you know all the 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 evil things that have happened, is not linear progress, but it's a linear accumulation of knowledge upon which people can build and upon which uh, they can progress in in some way. And of course, there are many things that make you skeptical and that make you pessimistic because in the social era, we haven't advanced as we should. Okay. We have done marvelous advance in the, in the medical field, marvelous advance in the technological field, grandiose advance in, in the economic field, because if we look at the general panorama, you have less people with hunger today than we had 10 years ago, and that's a good thing. But on the other hand, we have many uh, threats from you know, the overpopulation, from wars, from uh, you know, the, the movement of people from one region or the other because of the political or economic or uh, you know, the military oppression. And so uh, there are many uh, threats to that can be addressed by international cooperation and by leveraging the possibility that the internet offers that people from anywhere on the world can contribute and their voice can be heard, which was not the case 20 years ago. It has evolved in a slightly different word, a way than what I envision. Okay? Because uh, when I first met the internet, there was not World Wide Web. So the only way to, to get information was to try to use very rudimentary tools like Waze and Archie and other things like that in which you specifically had to ask particular question in order to get some kind of information. And uh, you had to know where the information was in the first place. So it was a very difficult task to get access to that kind of information. Whereas nowadays, you just have to Google it or use any other research uh, uh, navigation um, tool, and uh, it's at the tip of your, of your hands. So this somehow has changed completely the meaning of uh, knowledge as it itself. Because uh, uh, I remember a quote that was uh, often uh, in, a, in a magazine about you don't know, it's not important what you know, it's important that you know where to get to know what you need. Whereas nowadays, even that is no longer important because anybody can access, uh, you know, uh, Google and find information about anything. Of course, you have to filter that information. Of course, you have to be aware that many of the information is bogus and you have to, to make sure that you get the right kind of information. But at least you have tools that uh, give you a general idea. And so this is something that has surprised me because it's not what it used to be. It used to be much more difficult to, to get the information. The internet was there. It was like a library in which you had to go through the catalog and find out you know, wh what kind of books you might be interested in to find out the information that you are busking, uh, looking for at the, at, the, at the particular moment. And nowadays it's different. It's looking, you have everything at the tip of your hands. You don't have to work. The only thing that is quite different is that now you have a plethora of information and you have to choose about that information what seems reasonable and what seems not. I think they are both in, in, in the same, from the technology viewpoint, the emergency of the cloud services. You know, they are very positive because nowadays you don't have to worry about, you know, keeping the particular piece of information in, in your home laptop on your phone or your office desktop or whatever because you can put them in the cloud and have them at your fingertips anywhere you go. But on the other hand, this poses significant uh, threats in terms of privacy, in terms of security, and in terms of uh, the use of uh, 
other people are making of those data that you sometimes naively trust into the cloud.